What's going on everyone and welcome back to a brand new Starfield video and in today's video I'm going to be giving you 10 facts about ship building and customization in the game. The sandbox element that allows players to make their own fun has always been a huge draw for Bethesda games and Starfield is no different. Where other games might offer players some customization and the chance to purchase a variety of vessels, Starfield grants the player an astronomical amount of choice when it comes to how they blast around the galaxy especially in terms of the player's looks, base builds, homes and settlements. While designing the ideal spaceship isn't rocket science in Starfield, there are some essential pointers to keep in mind that will give prospective spacefarers the boost necessary to reach the moon, stars and beyond in the ship of their dreams. So the breakdown of the customization. Just like in many other space exploration games, players can optimize the performance of their ships through upgrades. The upgradable ship attributes are the hull, the shield, the cargo, the laser damage, the ballistic damage, the missile damage, the jump range, mobility, top speed, mass, and the crew. The hull and shield represent the ship's hard and soft hit points. Cargo is the ship's hull capacity, which should indicate that taking legitimate or illegitimate goods from one place to another for profit is a viable way to play. A range of different weapons are available to fend off, or pick on other ships. The ship's jump range is represented in light years and offers information on how much of the galaxy players can explore. And finally, the crew count represents the space left on the ship for personnel. Number nine is optimizing build. There are tons of customization options to choose from, but each upgrade and component isn't just a stat boost. They are visible on the ship itself. Every ship can be given a highly personalized paint job as well. Players can even get a specific as a coat of paint's hex code. Ship captains are expected to think about balancing their ship's strengths and weaknesses. Those looking to zip around space and outrun the authorities should opt for something light with as little bulk as possible. More defensive ships with heavier cowling, bigger guns, and a more powerful shield generator will be more sluggish, but will be in a better position to outlast their enemies. Number eight is that there are more than one way to build. As well as being able to modify your ship's every detail at a spaceport, players will be able to quickly slot new components in and out via a menu, which is great news for players who prefer getting in a ship and exploring deep space over meticulously planning a design at a drawing board. Everything from weapons to landing gears can be swapped out without having to mess around with the layout. Of course, for those who do like to play endlessly with deep ship building systems, build mode offers a ridiculous amount of flexibility to do so. Number seven is that the game has modular based construction. Starfield's developers focused less on realistic simulation and took a more build whatever it just works approach. As such, players won't be able to make a mess with the physics engine when designing their creation. In ship builder mode, parts or modules clip onto the ship like Lego. Modules can go anywhere that a blue snap point appears, giving ships a NASA punk look. Players looking for sleeker, rounder designs can mold their crafts into smoother shapes with the creative use of cowling. Number six is that you can also make your ships beautiful on the inside. Modules not only affect the way the ships look on the outside, but also on the inside. This means that swapping out one module for another will completely revamp its appearance. Since Starfield gives the player a body in first person mode, this changes how flying feels between each ship. The game offers a broad range of modules from many different in-game manufacturers, each with its design preferences. Players can choose a module's various iterations to find what suits their needs best. And of course, for any absent niches overlooked by Bethesda, it's likely that modders are out there working to fill the gap. Number five is that you can allocate various amounts of power to areas of your ship. Prospective captains should keep their eyes peeled for a good engine while exploring the galaxy. In Starfield, players can strap as much high-tech equipment onto their ships as they like, provided they can find a way to power each component. Once a ship has been built and is rocketing through space, players can allocate power from certain parts of the system to maximize effectiveness in a specific area. For example, while roaming a peaceful part of space, combat-oriented ships won't be stuck at a sluggish pace. Instead, they will be able to trade energy from their weapons and shields to the engines to gain a boost to their speed. Number four is that the ships have functional walkable interiors. Rather than being confined to the ship's cockpit, the ship's captain can explore any part with a functional interior. This includes the hab, which is the sleeping and living quarters, the armory, the docker, 
which is the hatch to the outside or to other ships, the cargo hold, the bay, the ship's main entrance and the exit. Besides being where the player can interact with the ship and its crew, each interior habitat can be used for gameplay purposes. For example, snapping a crafting module onto the ship gives the player access to crafting stations where they can improve their weapons and their suits between missions. Number three is that you can come up with unique, strange designs. Player ships in Starfield can look as practical, fun, or beautiful, or even ugly as the player desires. The only limit is the player's imagination, as well as their funds. The reactor's energy output limits, and of course, the limits hard-coded into build mode. Bethesda teased some wacky designs during the Starfield Direct event, including a squashed-looking robot, complete with rocket boost boots. However, there's more than enough potential in its build mode to spawn even more garish and tasteless player-made monstrosities, which is all part of the fun in sandbox games. Number two is that you can own multiple crafts. For players who don't want to design their crafts, buying or straight up stealing someone else's is an entirely viable tactic, but Bethesda won't force anyone to abandon their old love upon conquering a new one. Players can maintain two, three, or a whole fleet of ships simultaneously. Those with a particular penchant for ship pension can mark their favourite for quick access by tagging it as their home ship. Like in previous Bethesda titles, players are free to launch into a thievery spree at any time, but they won't just be able to lift something without consequence, even at zero Gs. Ships come as registered and unregistered, meaning that pilots with unregistered rides may find it difficult to get serviced at more respectable ports. And number one is that you will have to maintain your ship. Ships will inevitably get damaged over time through dogfights, bumps, or close calls with asteroids. That means that players should regularly maintain their ships, as with any other vital equipment that you may have. Port engineers will repair any dings and patch holes for a fee. Companions throughout the galaxy can be brought aboard for love or money. Crews aren't just there to make the captain look good, they are necessary for the good running of the ship. Crew members do come with strengths and weaknesses, and savvy captains should be able to leverage those strengths by assigning them a suitable position on the ship, even for companions who actually seem functionally useless. It seems like the amount of customization in Starfield is absolutely insane, especially when it comes to the ships, which makes sense since our ships are going to be our main way of getting around the galaxy and exploring the universe. I'm really excited to get my hands on the customization because I do think that with a lot of playing around, you may be able to recreate iconic spaceships from say Star Wars, Star Trek, or any sort of space adventure type movies, which I think is gonna be a really cool thing in Starfield. But that is it for today's video, so please do let me know down in the comments section below what you think of the ship customization in the game. And also let me know if you will be picking up Starfield. I think I will because I think it looks like a really cool game. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to smash a like on it to show support for Starfield on the channel. And if you are new to the channel and you've enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all Starfield content. But other than that, we'll see you in the next video.